Welcome to part three of my brush lettering course on YouTube. This follows on from part one, an introduction, and part two, the basic strokes. In this section, we'll work through the alphabet, showing you how to form each letter individually. As always, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so by hitting that subscribe button below. So let's move on to the alphabet. Right. Now, this is a very, very pale sheet. Uh, I was saying at the beginning, I don't know who was with me then. Um, with these, they're extremely pale. I apologise, I didn't realise how pale they were. I printed this one off just before I left the house. And I thought, oh, sorry about that. Um, I will upload some slightly darker versions for you. But this is an old, very, very basic brush lettering alphabet. If you can see it at all, if it didn't print out as a plain sheet for you. Uh, there is, is an alphabet on here. So it's just a way of you starting to practice your alphabet. Um, if you haven't got it, by all means, use a pencil. Just write out some letters and an alphabet very lightly in a pencil. Use uh, with the body around about an inch tall, very roughly about an inch tall. And then you can start tracing over them and just start practicing. So we've moved on from obviously our shapes to now actual letter formations. All right, so with an A, I'm going to run through the whole alphabet. So this is your chance to just, just have a practice, have a play for a moment, and then we'll start looking after that at, um, we'll start looking at your own names as well to so see what we can create with those. So for these, I'll bring you back to the other camera so you can see me. So the A is going to be thin at the top, thicker down to the bottom, lifting up before we reach the bottom, thin up to the top, and then I usually take my hand off if I'm doing this really neatly, and then my, what I call it, I call it the tail, but it's actually the top of the tail, so this bar here uh, that goes vertically, this starts higher up than that first part, well this, it does on my letters anyway, yours will all differ, but lightening the pressure just for a little controlled flick at the end. Now we have this little controlled tail because that's going to eventually be a connector into another word. So the majority of our letters, in fact I think all of our letters will have a connector of some description. Okay the only ones that don't usually, X I find very hard so I don't tend to connect them too much unless I've got a really nice smooth connection between the two to the next letter um, and K is just a horrible letter. You'll find you'll have favourite letters and letters you dislike. K is not my favourite. We'll, I'll tackle that when we come to it. So the alphabet that I've given you here, I'm just going to be going over it. Please do type any questions if you think of it. If there's any particular letter you're struggling with, please let me know. So you can see like after the B, we've curled round through the B as if we're going to then join into another letter. Okay. Some of them are easy, for example, the C, it's nice and easy, just comes into the next letter like so. Things like a D as well, be like an A, and we'll just very controlled flick into the next letter. Okay, so we'll just work through these. Can you all hear me okay? Let me know if there's any sound issues, um, because like I say, I do have a heater on in here, and it's a little electric heater, and it's um, quite noisy. Now, um, the letters I've given you here, I wrote this sheet out a long time ago, okay, a very long time ago. So, you can see my pen is actually starting to fray there a little bit, it's a very cheap pen, it's one I use for practising. Um, so, the letters that I've got written here are not how I would now form these letters. A lot of them have changed over time, so I've found that uh, my F actually, F is my favourite letter. I love doing an F and that's not changed over the years at all. Uh, you're the same with P's, Karen. Okay, no problem. We can look at P's. Um, obviously, Sophie, you've got a P in your name. Um, Karen, I said about K's. Oh, K is my least favourite, but I think I've now found a nice way of doing a, a K. Uh, we're not going to look at capitals, by the way, today, um, only because once you've got the basics, you can form any capital, any number i didn't want to overwhelm you with different letters and words and things so we'll look at uh, basics today but i do have a brush lettering group on facebook actually besides this group different to this group um that you're welcome to join it's part of my page 
uh, which is admin for this. So the Lou Collins page. There's a thousand and so members in there, I believe. I don't post in there very often, but there's a lovely community um, who will help you out if you've got any questions on purchasing supplies. If you've got any, um, if you just want to share what you've been doing, by, by all means, go in and do that. Now, you may notice if you can see the grey um, on the sheet that things, some of the letters are not flat. They're not sitting on that baseline, particularly that we were talking about earlier. And the H is a really good example. I know this paper's at a funny angle. But with the H here, the first stem is higher up than the tail at the bottom where we finish. And that's a little, just bringing in a little bit of bounce for you. I will go over bounce for you later. It's a technique. Um, if you practice your brush lettering initially on a straight line, eventually you can start adding this bouncy effect where the um, the letter, the full letter, doesn't sit on a straight line and elements of it bounce up and down. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's so many different techniques. I mean, I could actually do this as a beginning, middle and end lettering course and do six hours of it and still not cover everything. So for us to squeeze in as much as possible in two hours, we'll be, we'll be doing well. Now I'm at the K. Um, the K I've put here for you because it, like I said, it's an old sheet that I did before developing my alphabet. Um, I'll trace over it so you can see what it is. So it's got that sort of curved K and then it comes down again it's a nice low tail okay and it's not a bad k but i've actually found and i'll show you this when you have a little break and look at some different letters i've actually found that if i curve my stem a little bit more and then i don't do the circle i actually do i'm hoping you can see this okay uh, i actually do straight lines for the k and this can work for a capital as well but i do a thicker beginning down to quite low down so I'm looking at at least three quarters of the way down the K and then I just do a little kick up okay and I prefer that sort of K and you can adjust the height and the length and things like that so it might be that you you want to do it much longer you know you can play with it but I just prefer now that K at the moment uh, and it will probably change if I was to do this again in a year I'd have all different letters uh, and L is quite simple it's just got a nice loop to the beginning this makes it easier for you to connect from the past letter um, so with we've, we've got a thin connector all connectors are thin okay so every time you connect from one letter into another it's always a thin stroke so it comes into where the stem of the letter will be and if you want to you can do that bit stop come to the other side do the part loop okay lift up your pen have a break and then start again and press down covering joining and covering up those lines and then do like so okay so you don't have to do everything in one now the M is going to be a little bit of practice from your brush stroke sheet that we did at the beginning so pressing down and up and down and up I'm doing thin and thick okay and again I've got I've changed my M and my N styles now but I'll show you those when you give your rest your wrist a rest <laughs> in a little while um, O's again I have changed my style now personally but I learnt by doing this this way because with an O as you learn on the brush stroke sheet the one we did previously joining an O perfectly is very difficult so if we purposely just keep the thick and thin lines separate like this and loop round the top of the thick line instead you haven't got to worry about lining up the thickness of the lines right now we're on to a P so with the P what I found is we don't keep the thick stem that's this Okay, and now I, I don't know if you notice, I curve mine a little bit more now. Uh, maybe that's something that comes when you start gaining a bit more confidence in forming your letters. I'm not sure, but I curve a lot of my stems now. I just like the look of it. Um, and rather than bringing in my P from halfway up the next thin line, I will bring it 
from the bottom almost from the bottom and I will start to bring it out early I'll then curve this round now you can stop there and just leave it not connected to the next letter if you want to or you can continue that into the next letter whatever it may be uh, but I just find by separating these that just makes it a slightly nicer letter um, it gives you a little more space as well to play with curving that round if you want to go into the next I know what you mean two P's together because they're such a complex letter with all the strokes two P's together never look great I do get that so hopefully leaving that little gap might they might start looking a bit nicer or just don't connect them just don't worry about the bit that goes into the next um, I'm running out of room on here but just stop and then lift your pen up and go to the next there's nothing to say you have to join them up when you're doing brush uh, bounce lettering as well don't forget you you can adjust the height of the letters next to each other we'll look at that later on so i'm going to be talking about spacing uh, and fitting letters around each other to form phrases and sentiments and how you build them up so um, I'll talk a lot about moving your letters up and down to fit so that's something you can consider when you're putting two P's together um, the Q so the Q is very much like um, what is it like it's like a backwards P really but I come to the top and I keep that stem separate from the bit I've just done and then we lift up the pressure at the bottom nice thin line some people will bring this through the stem and curl it some won't I don't use I don't tend to but it's an option for you up into the next letter now an R is one I'm going to cover when I show you lots of different letter shapes and formations because this is one that I've formed and I find it quite an easy one and it's really nice as well if you've got a big gap to fill to make that like a really a really large loop and with your large loop you've then got the space to make that a little bit more um, thick as, as the downstroke there too if you want to so an R can be really quite fancy uh, another one that people struggle with and with uh, has so many different letter shapes and formations is an S now I've given you quite a simple S and this is one that I've used in my own handwriting for a while um, but again I will give you different variations of that as we um, go through when you have a little rest in a bit now a T is really quite simple once you've started the crossbar on the T is usually a thin line okay um, if you none of the flourishes which I'm going to talk to you about later are thick we very rarely do anything thick lined in a flourish and that includes crossbars okay so that includes connectors as well so all of the additional parts of a letter are thin so if you're confused about whether it should be thick or thin just make it thin okay um, we've got a U which is quite easy and just a bit of a, a similar technique to one of the ones on the brush stroke sheet I'm going to change my pen soon I think I've worn this one out it's not the only time I've been using it today um, V again really easy we come to the bottom we can have a break we can lift off there if you want to now this on this sheet there's a little loop there personally now I don't do the loop anymore I sort of stop and I just come across because I think it's simplified the letter and when it's in a sentence in a word it looks it's easier to read uh, my W has changed a bit a little bit only very slightly but it's still thicker lines and thin lines and again on this one sometimes there's a loop here like so and sometimes there's not so you know I've just made that very wonky an X is a letter that um, I still struggle with X and Z to be honest I'm not keen on them but I think that purely comes with not doing them very often so um, if you find you've got a letter that you really don't love the best thing to do is practice it and that's horrible to say um, I like the the nice swirl we've got within or the stroke we've got within an X once you've learned how to do that sideways you go across with light pressure come down at the angle with a thick pressure and then lift up with the light pressure that's quite a nice shape so it's not too bad but connecting an X can be really difficult and if anything I'd usually connect from the top this top uh, right hand 
uh, end rather than the bottom like most things because from the bottom it looks a little bit odd from the top it looks okay and then with an X you can start playing with making the large large thick stroke um, much larger and the thin stroke smaller if you want to and such uh, a Y is nice but I've got a bit more of a style to mine now uh, Y is nice and easy and that that uh, end the tail of the Y you can bring up to anywhere we will look at flourishing those later as well uh, and Z as well a Z is a really complicated letter my daughter's name is actually Isabel um, but I don't tend to use Z and it's another it's another example of I don't use it very often so I don't enjoy writing it if you're struggling for letter formations actually um, a good place for you to look is on Pinterest somebody has put together some posts that are 50 ways to letter every single alphabet so if you're ever stuck for for a letter maybe you really really don't like how a k or a p how you're doing them you can look on here just type into pinterest 50 ways to letter k 50 ways to letter p whatever it may be and you'll you'll see quite quickly within the results uh, the examples so on one page there are 50 different ways of forming that letter and hopefully within there you'll find some different ways to try out have a go with and see which ones you like and that's very much how i've evolved my brush lettering um font as such because i've seen some in there that right i'll try that out and it won't immediately come to you but you may try it out 10 20 times however many times and think actually yeah that's working for me i'm going to keep on with that one in part four, we will take three of the live viewers' names and use what we have learnt so far to write the full names out. We start looking at connectors, how to join letters together and how to add flowing details. I hope you can join me for part four. That will be uploaded very soon. And again, please do subscribe if you liked this video.